All right, so what we're going to do now is use that same set of data we had earlier, a bunch of test scores, uh, and we're going to perform a one sample t test instead of the one sample z test. So these two things are really the same. What changes is simply whether or not the population variance or standard deviation is known. In a z test, you presume to know not just the expected value, but the population variability, either the variance or standard deviation. Obviously, if you have one, you know the other because variance is just standard deviation squared. And so you assume that you know this value when you do a z-test. When you do a t-test, as we've noted here, uh, you have an unknown value for the population variability. And this means that you have to estimate it. How do you estimate? You just will use the value from your sample data in this case. Other than that, the structure of the test is the same, where you'll have your observed sample mean minus the expected value divided by the standard error, which will now be the estimate for the variability, which comes from your data, so the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size. Now, there is a t-test function. So we saw previously that there was this z-test function. There is also a t-test function. Now, the t-test function, you'll notice, assumes you have two arrays of data. You can tell it if you're doing a one- or tail, two-tailed test. Uh, so this is one choice. There's also t-tests under the data analysis tool pack option that we've installed, data analysis. Um, now, if you notice, when you come to data analysis, it only has paired or two sample. There's no one sample t-test. So I'm going to show you a quick way to get around that, to still be able to use this data analysis function, or to be able to have the two arrays of data you need for a t-test here. So we'll talk about in class that really uh, the, re the paired samples or related t-tests are just kind of a special case of a one sample t-test because you just use difference scores. So we can use that test option to get the right answer. All we have to do to achieve this is make a set of dummy values. And these dummy values are going to be zero and we're going to autofill that. So here we have a set of dummy values. So now notice what our related sample test is going to do is it's going to take this value minus this value, which is just going to be this value, right? So you're going to with, with a set of data that are these scores already, right? So then what's the expected value for these scores? It's this. So we can now use our t test for the paired t, where we have our, our data for one in A1 to 31, and for the other one is in B1 to 31. Okay, we have our labels because we have names here at the top. The hypothesized mean difference, 75, right, which is your expected value here. Okay, so once we've specified all this, uh, we can just go ahead and stick our output right here. So I'm going to just put our output right next to this so we can see it quickly and easily. We run our test, and let's see what we get. All right, so we're going to expand this so we can see it all nicely. All right, so here are scores. So the scores have an average of 73, right? There's the variance, 30 observations. Mean difference expected are 29 degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, all correct, okay? Uh, the dummies are zeros, right? Of course, that's what we put in. So all that's going to happen here is we're going to get our t-test for this pair, but it's really for a one sample. So we could adjust that and we could say, you know, t-test, one sample just to update it we can get rid of these dummy scores because they're useless the correlation this would be for repeated you want this because you want to know if these two values are correlated now the reason this correlation is an error is because these are all zeros so you can't correlate a constant with something this is a constant right it doesn't vary so it's impossible to get the correlation so i'm just going to go ahead and delete that okay so we're going to shift the cells up um, and then we can just say, instead of the difference, this is the hypothesized mean, okay? And so, there you go. Uh, this is it. This is what we want. Here is our T statistic, okay? And then down below, we have the one and the two-tailed p-values, as well as the critical values. So if we're doing a two-tailed test, we would look at this and this, right? So we have a T with 29 degrees of freedom equals negative 0.5. 5, uh, p is 
right? And that would be our result. And so we can confirm some of these things just to see that we got what we needed. If you look at the average for our data set in A2 to A31, we'll see that this average is the average we can get here. If we get our variance for this data set, we'll see that this variance is the variance we get here. If we get the sample size for our data set, we'll see that this is the value we get in our observations here. So we see that we're getting the same information if we do these by hand. And now if we were to conduct this t-test and, and just use Excel to do the math, right, what would we have? We would have the observed minus the predicted divided by the square root of the variance over n. And here is our t-statistic. Okay, well, that is what we got here, right? And then, of course, you could get the t-value for that statistic. And there's the one-tailed p-value that we get right here. And then our two-tailed p-value, have to use a positive value of t. So we need to get the absolute value of this. So I'm going to use the command abs, which is going to produce the absolute value. That is, it's, it'll make it positive. And our degree of freedom is going to be this n minus 1 term. And there is our two-tailed p-value. So there is one-tailed p, two-tailed p. And so here you see that we produce the exact same statistics right there. There are all those numbers. So um, we can do this all by, you know, kind of putting in the math and using the distribution functions, calculating these values out. But you see that if we kind of shortcut it, uh, we can use that paired sample t-test. All we have to do is make a set of data here that says zero, right? And once you've done that, you'll get the answer you need out of that. So you can use the data analysis function still. All right, so I hope that helps with how you can perform a one sample t-test kind of in a, in a cheating way um, using Excel.